Hello, everybody. Welcome to Connections Devotional. Um, we want to get into some Bible study today. We're going to look at um, Psalm, the uh, 18th uh, chapter, looking at the first few verses. I believe that there's a lot that we can gain tonight from uh, looking at these verses and uh, looking at these scriptures and relating them to our situation right now, uh, not just with everything that's going on, but uh, right now in our lives. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful passage uh, of scripture. Uh, but before we get into the scripture, I want to open us up with a song of praise. The song is called, I Love You, Lord, Today. Many of you may know this song. It's a very old song, but it is a song that uh, is on my heart today. It's a song that uh, I remember uh, that I used to love uh, when we sang, uh, but it's called I Love You, Lord, Today. If you don't know it, just listen along, and then once you get the lyrics, just go ahead and sing with us. It's a very easy and simple song, and it goes, I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today. Because you cared for me in such a special way, that's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Let's say that again. I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today, because you cared for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you, I lift you up, and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. One more time, I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today, because you cared for me in such a special way that's why i praise you i lift you up and i magnify your name that's why my heart is filled with praise and then we say my heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. You pay the price for me. Way back at Calvary, that's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Say my heart, my heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. You paid the price for me. Way back at Calvary, that's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why, that's why my heart is filled with praise. That's why my heart, that's why my heart is filled with praise. Last time, that's why my heart is filled with praise. Hallelujah. My heart, my mind, my soul belongs to the Lord and my heart is filled with praise. Amen. Amen. As I said, we're going to look at 
the 18th chapter of Psalm as we get into our connections this this evening. But before, so before I would like to just pray to open us up. Heavenly Father, I thank you that uh, my heart is filled with praise today. And it's filled with praise because of all that you've done in our lives, my life specifically. I thank you for who you are and who you've been, Lord. I thank you that uh, you've given us the opportunity to know you just a little bit more every day. And Father, that's what I would like to do. Know you more every single day. And Father, as we are getting into the Bible study devotional, I pray that you would do the same for all of those who are watching, all of those who are connected to the body of believers. We are one body. And I thank you for drawing us to, together even during these tough times. I'm so grateful for all of the Bible studies that are going on, the small groups, um, the phone calls that are being made, um, all of the ways in which we can uh, not only dive into your word, but connect with one another. And by doing that, Father, we want to connect with you. Father, hold us close during these times. Hold us close that we will know that you are there with us, that we will know that you are working on our behalf. So we thank you, Lord. Father, help us to learn and grow from your word. Uh, help us to um, dig a little deeper into who we are and who we are in you. Father, that uh, we will recognize uh, who you are in our lives. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for all that you've done. You are such a good God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. And so we're going to look at Psalm 18. Uh, this is a psalm of David, and it is believed to be one of the latter uh, psalms of David. Uh, we can also find this psalm in 2 Samuel, um, the 22nd chapter, almost in its entirety. It looks almost identical. There's a few things that are different, but uh, it's pretty much the same psalm. And so you can look at it there as well, but I'm going to focus on uh, Psalm, the 18th chapter, uh, just the first three verses uh, for our devotional uh, this evening. So I'm going to read all three verses and then we're going to break down um, the first, the second, and the third verse. So the psalm reads, and I'm reading from the NASB, by the way. It reads, I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. What a beautiful few verses that is that David gives to us. Um, this psalm is a psalm that he had written to the Lord and he is reflecting on how God delivered him from his enemies. And if you know anything about King David, uh, he had a lot of enemies, um, particularly one of the most famous enemies is Saul, who was the king of Israel, who was jealous of David and uh, wanted to take his life. And he pursued David for a long time. And um, the Lord delivered him from the hands of Saul and placed David on the throne. Um, but not only Saul, uh, David encountered many enemies um, from the Philistines to many of the battles that he had to fight and he had waged and he won those battles. And so he's reflecting on how God delivered him from all of the battles that he had uh, as he's looking back at his life. Uh, many of us can do the same thing when we look back at our lives, how God delivered us from all of the trials and tribulations that we have had, it indeed was a battle that we had gone through, many battles. And I love how the word says, uh, the battle is not ours, but it belongs to the Lord. And so the Lord delivers us from the battles that we go through, and they're not even ours. They belong to the Lord. The battle is not ours, it's the Lord, Lord's, but he delivers us, us through them. So as we look at the, these first few uh, verses, right out of the gate, what does David say? I love you. I love you, just like the song we sang. I love you. He is coming right out of the gate with this psalm, which is a song to the Lord, just telling him that 
He loves them. Now, we know that the only way that we can love God is because he loved us first. That's what the scripture tells us. And so David is tapping into the love that God has shown to him all of these years. And how does God love us? <laughs> he loves us through discipline. He loves us through correction. He loves us through provision. He loves us through guidance. Uh, he loves us through all the blessings that he gives to us. God's love is full and rich and it's true. And when we tap into that love, the design is so that we will love him back. We're supposed to love God. That's what all of this is about. Even the battles that God takes us through, all of the situations that he brings us through, they're designed to help us to love God more. We should tap into that more often, thinking about the love that God has for us so that we can love him back in a, in a better way. So that's what David recognizes, and he points out that God loves him. And so therefore, I am going to love God back with everything that I had. And all of our pursuits should center around God's love for us and our ability to love God back. So he gets the, the psalm off to a wonderful, wonderful start. Everything that uh, David has gone through, he draws on the love that God has for him. And so we need to do the same thing. And then he talks about his strength. He says, O oh Lord, my strength, or Yahweh, my strength. Yahweh is the Hebrew name of God, of the Lord. And he says that my strength is because of you, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, my strength. You are my strength. Our strength comes from God. Any strength that we have it's because of the strength of God. And we know that he is strong. We know that he is mighty. We know that he is able to do all things. So if he has that kind of strength and he's working on our behalf or he is leading us and helping and guiding us, we can draw from his strength. And then it becomes our strength because God is strong. So what the word is saying is, uh, I love you, Lord. Or I love you, O oh Lord, my strength, meaning I have become strong because of you, O oh Lord. I am strong. I have become strong because of you, my Lord. That word strength is kezek. This is the only place in the Old Testament that uses that Hebrew word kezek which means I've become strong or I am strong because of you, O Lord, because of you, Yahweh. Now, he's not just talking about bodily strength. When we think of being strong, we think of, uh, you know, the, the strong iron men, those who lift a lot of weights and who have worked their body and conditioned their body so that it will be strong, able to do more than it could before. But it's not just physical or bodily strength. We're also talking about mental strength. That's a strength as well. When you can think, when you are able to clear your mind and focus on things, when you are able to go through certain things and still have your mind set on the things it should be set on. You have mental strength. So God gives us not just physical strength, but he gives us mental strength to be able to go through these battles, these difficulties, these things that David is talking about that he needed to be delivered from. God gave him the mental strength to be able to go through those things. And then we not have to talk about the emotional strength. Emotional strength is a real thing. Because how many of you know when you go through many difficult trials and, and situations, it takes some emotional strength because our feelings go up and down and up and down. And it can lead us astray if, if we allow our emotions to lead us rather than God if we allow our emotions to be the deliverer rather than God. And so emotional strength is something that we get from God. We're able to go through the things that we go through and still maintain our emotions, not be led by our emotions. Still feel because feelings are a part of being human. God has given us feelings. He's given us emotions and they're supposed to be a good thing for us. It helps us to live life, to really enjoy life, to live passionately. We're made in God, God's image, and he has emotions. But we have emotional strength because of God, because of Yahweh. 
We don't have to break down and fall apart because of our emotions. We can go through all the different emotions. And if you know David and you've read the Psalms, you know that he goes through a lot of different emotions as he is running from, from Saul. A lot of different emotions. I mean, he loved Saul, and yet Saul was trying to kill him. His best friend, his, his, his brother, so to speak, was Saul's son, Jonathan. And so Jonathan is conflicted in that, and David feels conflicted in that. So imagine what's going on with his emotions. And so God gives him the emotional strength. And then lastly, the spiritual strength that we need. We need to press beyond our feelings. We need to press beyond our physical. We need to press beyond our mental and then tap into the spiritual. God has given us his spirit. His spirit is strong. His spirit is true. His spirit is always, always right <laughs> if we tap into the spiritual strength that we have. And, and we, as, as Christians, we are spiritual beings. Yes, we live a natural life, but we are spiritual beings. We need to be led by his spirit, and that's what makes us strong. The other thing I wanted to mention was uh, David is looking to the other side of his weakness. All of us have weakness. I mean, uh, no one is perfect. No one is strong in terms of uh, themselves on their own in every single area. We all have areas that we're working on, areas that we're not very strong on. Um, but sometimes we focus too much on those weaknesses, those things that we can't do, and we just leave it at that. Well, I'm weak in this area, and so therefore I'm just weak. I'm just going to leave it at that. Yes, the Lord is working on me. Yes, uh, the Lord is working on me every single day in this area, but I'm just taking it as I'm weak. I'm just going to accept, accept the fact that I'm weak. But David looks to the other side of that weakness. And you know what the other side of our weakness is? Strength. <laughs> Strength that comes from God. Because if we focus just on the weakness, we're going to stay weak in that area. But if we look to the other side of it, of it, where we are strong in God, then we are therefore strong in God. So let's not focus on our weakness and look to the other side of that weakness, which, which is strength, which is strength in Christ. Because of Christ, I am strong. Just take one of your weaknesses, whatever your weakness is. And we all have them. I can think of several weaknesses that I have. As opposed to just saying I'm weak in that area. I need to say that I'm strong because of Christ, not because of me, because if I'm just focusing on me, I am weak, utterly, desperately weak. But if I look to God, I am strong because he covers me in that if I allow him to. God can cover you in your weakness if you allow him to. I think of marriage as an example. For those of you who are married, a marriage is supposed to cover weaknesses. Uh, when you come together as a married couple, you're not strong in every area, neither is your spouse. But you complement one another as you come together and you cover each other's weaknesses. That's why we talk about opposites attract, because you guys don't have all the same strengths. And that's a good thing and it's a design in marriage. That's why you are attracted to one another, because you see something that's strong in them that's not strong in you. You may be weaker in that area. And so when you come together, you cover each other's weaknesses. The same is true for us and God. His strength covers our weaknesses. But we have to uh, be humble, have humility. We have to tap into his strength. We have to not try to do everything on our own when we know that we're weak in those areas. We need to run to him, continue to run to him because we know we're weak and he's strong. And that's why we're able to get through the things that we need to get through. I like how 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, and, and we all know this particular scripture, uh, 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, looking at verse number, I think it's verse number 9, yeah. 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verse number 9. And this is Paul talking about his, his weaknesses. And he says, and he said to me, he's talking about the Lord. This is what the Lord said to him. My grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. And I'm going to read verse 10 as well. 
It says, therefore, I am well content with weaknesses and insults and distresses, with persecutions, with difficulties for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So he recognized that his strength comes from God. So he boasts about his weakness, not to boast about his weakness, but he boasts about his weakness because that helps him to focus on the strength that God has for him. So that his weakness is complemented with the strength of God. Let's look at verse number two. It says, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Now, when we first look at verse number two, he's talking about Yahweh again. The Lord, the Lord is my rock. And he's, as he's going through the second verse, he's talking about everything that God is or Yahweh is that benefits him. Now, this is all God. Without God, we are nothing. But with God, we can do all things, is what the word tells us. And so he's talking about everything that God is. And because God is these things, because he belongs to the Lord, he's able to tap into, he's able to receive, he's able to benefit from everything that God is. And so he starts out talking about the Lord is my rock. He's my rock. And what that word is saying is really saying uh, that he is a crag or a cliff for uh, for uh, David. That the Lord is a crag or cliff. So what is a crag or cliff? Um, if you have been in any mountainous area, uh, sometimes you'll see an area of the mountain or the rock that is higher than the other areas. And it kind of has... Um, a, a vertical or angled uh, rock that kind of looks up to the sky almost at an angle. Oh, I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, have you seen the movie Lion, The Lion King? I'm sure everyone has seen it. I didn't see the newest one, the uh, the newest remake, but when I think about the cartoon, uh, there's an, a, a scene that is pretty much iconic, the scene. And the scene is uh, um, Mufasa... Simba and Rafiki on the cliff, which was called Pride Rock, if you remember the movie. And Rafiki is holding Simba up in the air, presenting him to all of the animals, saying that this is the future king of the jungle or of the pride. He's the future king. He's the prince. And so what they're standing on is what would be considered a, a crag or a cliff, this rock that... Uh, uh, David is talking about, that the Lord is that for him, that when he focuses on the Lord, when he thinks about the Lord and everything that the Lord does, the Lord lifts him up on this, this, this crag, this cliff, this cliff, and everyone else, as they look toward him, they see him high with the Lord, that he's, he's protected. That's what, that's what he's talking about here. So there's protection, there's security in this high place that God is for him and that God has for him. I want to look at uh, Exodus for a second. Um, let's look at Moses. Exodus, the 33rd chapter, and we're going to read verses 21 and 22. Exodus 33. This is when uh, Moses um, wanted to see the glory of the Lord. He wanted to see him face to face. And so Moses said, if I found favor in your sight, show me your glory. And the beautiful, wonderful thing that's so unexpected is that he's able to see the glory of God. And this is what, what happens in verse number uh, 21 and 22. Well, verse 20, 20, 20 says, but the Lord said to him, you cannot see my face for no man can see me and live. So he pretty much told him that you can't see my face, even though that's what you want to see. I'm just going to show you my backside. And so verse 21 says, then the Lord said to him, behold, there is a place by me and you shall stand there on the rock. And then verse 22 says, and it will come about while my glory is passing by that I will put you in the cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. 
So I think of that scripture when uh, David is talking about the Lord being his rock and how um, God put Moses on the rock and allowed him to see his glory. He, he, he held him in this high place, this place of security, this, this, this place where he's able to see the Lord pass by. So this is a place of security, a place of protection, a place of safety. It's a high place that God has for us. God is our rock. He's strong. He's able to hold us in place, this high place, which is protection for us. And then he goes on to say in verse number two, and my fortress. Uh, when I think of fortress, you know, I go way back to when I was a kid and I used to play with the He-Man dolls. I don't know if you remember the He-Man dolls. Uh, what did I, did I actually call them a doll? I mean, action figure. What am I thinking? He-Man action figure. That's what it was. But anyway, I remember the uh, Castle Grayskull and it was the fortress of the uh, he heroine, the hero, which, who is uh, a He-Man. And that's, that was his place of protection. That's where he would run to. That was the place that no one could be able to penetrate this fortress, this, this, this place that, that belonged to him. And so when we look at this uh, fortress and the scripture, it really is talking about uh, a net for the prey of a hunter. So if you think about a hunter, a hunter may use a net to catch the prey. That is what he's talking about when he's saying this, this fortress. It's like a net for prey. Uh, a, a good example of that is a spider web. A spider spins his or her web. I don't know if it's the women who do, do the web or the, or the, the, the male spiders. I, I don't know. I'm not a, a, a biologist where I can tell you that. But they spin the web and then they sit in the web. And what do they do? They wait for their prey to come. They wait for uh, them to get caught in the web and then they can get out and they are able to devour their prey. That's what the Lord is for, uh, for David. He's this fortress so that when the enemy comes, they get caught in the web and there's no escape for them. I like how Job chapter 39, uh, let's look at that for a second. Job chapter 39 uh, puts this fortress into perspective for uh, for us to help us understand what David is talking about. Job chapter 39, verse number 26. Let's read 26 through 29. This is this is awesome. It says, Is it by your understanding that the hawk soars? stretching its wings toward the south. It is at your command that the eagle mounts up and makes his nest on high. On the cliff he dwells and lodges, upon the rocky crag in inaccessible places. From there he spies out food. His eyes see it from afar. That's what this fortress is. It's this place where you are safe, but your enemy is not. <laughs> Those who come against you, they are not safe in your fortress, the fortress of the Lord. That's who he is to us. He is our fortress uh, indeed. The Lord is our fortress. So let's go back to Psalm, the uh, 18th chapter. And then he says, you are my deliverer, that the Lord is my deliverer. What does that mean? That means that he is an escape for us. He is uh, the one who carries us away safely. We're able to slip away from danger. Uh, if you like action movies or movies that uh, have the good guy and the bad guy and in order to create the drama, in order to keep you intrigued in watching the movie, oftentimes the hero would be just about to get the bad guy and the bad guy will slip away. Just slip through the hero's fingers. Only for a time and then he would get him in the end, of course. But the way that the enemy is able to slip away from the danger 
that is coming. Or do it on the flip side. The hero is able to slip away from the enemy's grasp. That's what God is for us. He carries us off to safety. We're able to slip away so that even when the enemy does mount up, when he does attack, and it seems like we're going to be overtaken by him, God allows us to slip away safely, to escape from the peril that is destined for us based on all accounts that we see. And so he's telling the Lord that you are my deliverer. You carry me away safely. And that's something for us to consider, especially right now. God is our deliverer. We will slip away safely, even with everything that's going on right now. We will escape the peril that is happening. And it happens throughout our lives. And God continues to allow us to escape, to get away safely. Um, and then we get to the second verse or the second half of verse number two, and he says, my God, my rock, we've already covered my rock. He says, in whom I take refuge. Take refuge. So I think about this particular part of the, um, the verse, and refuge is a place of protection. We seek refuge to protect us from something else. Uh, I'll give you an example. If it's raining really bad, have you ever seen people running to their car? If they're coming from um, another place, maybe they're at the supermarket and they uh, need to get to their car, but it's raining like cats and dogs coming down really hard, the big drops. And you see people running to their car so that they can get to this place of protection or this place of refuge, and so they run to it. That's what he's talking about here. You are my place of refuge where I can run to you to escape, to get away from the danger that's happening right now. Or maybe think of something worse, hail coming down. Maybe even golf ball size hail. Uh, if people are walking down the street, I know you've seen it before, maybe you've done it yourself, where you're walking down the street and then suddenly, suddenly it starts to hail. And then you have to find some place of safety quick. And so you'll see people standing under trees. You'll see them standing under, under awnings. You'll, they'll find any way that they can to get safety or protection from the danger that they're experiencing, the fall of that, uh, of that hail. Uh, and so that's what God is. We're able to run to him. But let's take it a step further. It's not just from physical danger. We can confide in him. We can run to him when, when things are really bad. I don't know if you have a, a best friend or someone you can talk to. When things are really bad, you need someone to talk to, you can run to them and confide in them. You can trust in them. You're able to hope in not just them, but in the protection that the relationship offers. That's what God is for us. He's our refuge. We can trust him. We can trust him with everything that's going on. We can trust him with our very lives. Well, when we're talking about our, our physical, our mental, emotional, we can trust him with all of that. And he'll care for it. He'll protect it. He'll shelter us from all of the, all of the things that, that's going on. Um, but one of the things I like that we can do, we don't have to just run to him like he's stationary. He's right there and I can only go right there. And if I'm over here, I can't get there. But I like to think of God as also being our umbrella. Wherever we go, he is with us. He is able to shelter us from danger wherever we go. So it doesn't matter whether you're, you're at home. It doesn't matter whether you're out. God can shelter you. You can take him with you wherever you go. The problem is we forget to take him with us. Just like we forget the umbrella. Ah, oh, I forgot to grab my umbrella because it wasn't raining when I was out. But it suddenly started to rain. But see, if you always take them with you, you always have the shelter. You always have the protection. You always have that. I like to look at Psalm uh, 57 and 1. Let's flip, flip over to that. Psalm 57 and 1. Psalm 57 and 1 says, Be gracious to me, O God. Be gracious to me. For my soul takes refuge in you. And in the shadow of your wings, I will take refuge until destruction passes by. 
I love that example of the shelter that God is under his wings, just like uh, a baby bird is able to come underneath the, the mother bird's wings and receive shelter and protection from everything else in the world. That's what God is for us. We're able to seek shelter and refuge from him or, or in him. He's able to hide us because there's always destruction around. He, we're able to hide underneath his wings, underneath his protection. And then it says, let's flip back to Psalm 18. Hope you guys are tracking with me still. If you are, just say amen. Amen. Then he says, um, I take refuge in verse number two, my shield. He calls God his shield. Uh, we all know what a shield is. A shield helps us uh, to defend ourselves. When there is an incoming attack, we're able to put the shield between us and the danger and the shield absorbs the blow from the enemy. That's what God is for us. He comes between us and danger. He is the in-between. He is the buffer between us and the danger that we face. The, uh, the word that's used here is Megan, M-A-G-E-N, uh, uh, which means he is a, not only a protector, but he comes between us as a buckler, a, a shield between danger a, a, and us. When I think of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, I don't know if any of you are Marvel fans, the movie Marvel, the comic Marvel movies. Uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. really stands for Strategic Homeland Intervention Enforcement and Logistics Division, which is a long name, and they always make a joke about the name in the movie, how long it is, so they just say S.H.I.E.L.D. And the only word that uh, relates to what, uh, what, what, what David is talking about is that intervention. God intervenes. He comes between you and danger always. And that's why it's like, why, why do we worry so much when we have a shield, a shield to protect us? We don't, a shield isn't necessarily a D, uh, I'm sorry, an offensive weapon. It's a defensive weapon. It's something that is between you and danger. So you're always on the other side of the attack that comes. And you know who's in front of it always? God. He's always taking the blow for, for us. And we see that with Jesus. What did Jesus do? He took the blow for us. He took the penalty for our sins. Where were we? On the other side of it. <laughs> Safe. So God is our shield, and that's what David is, is speaking about. Let's look at Ephesians 6.16. Ephesians chapter 6.16, and this is a, a popular verse when we're talking about the armor uh, of God. But 6.16, Ephesians 6, chapter 6, verse 16 says, in addition to all, taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. You're able to extinguish all of the flaming arrows. So what is that saying? The enemy is going to take shots at you. He's going to take shots at us, but we can take courage. We can uh, have hope and we can have confidence that our shield, the Lord, is between us and the enemy, that he's taking the shots for us. He's protecting us from all of those flaming arrows. So we take up this shield, our faith, our hope, our trust is in God because that is who he is. He is our shield. And then verses, verse 2 goes on to say, and the horn of my salvation. The horn of my salvation. The scripture is talking about making reference to a physical horn, the horn of an animal. If you think about a ram, uh, the horn that a ram has on it, that, that horn is for the animal's defense. So if any other animal came to try to attack the ram, that ram could, could, could use its horns to defend itself. 
that ram, the strength is in the horn. If you take the, the, the horns from the ram, what does the ram really have? Not much. And so that, that horn that the ram has is its defense. It's its tool to be able to protect itself from any enemy that tries to attack uh, the ram. So it's defense, it's protection from any and all threat. And so what we do is we trust the horn of God. We trust his horn as our protection, as our salvation. Our salvation is in him. That's why it's the, the horn of our salvation. God, his horn, his defense, his protection. And it leads to our salvation. And then lastly, it talks about my stronghold, that God is our stronghold in verse number two. What does stronghold mean? That word is, is misgab, M-I-S-G-A-B, misgab. It is actually a literal place in Moab that he's referencing. And the place that the Moabites use in order to uh, use as a stronghold, a place of, uh, of security, of protection when the attacks came. And the security is in the height because it is a high place. It's a high place. And, and if you know anything about uh, war or uh, uh, the attack of war, it's very difficult to uh, attack someone who has the higher ground. It's always better to have the higher ground in an attack, in a, in a war. You want to make sure you have the higher ground. So this stronghold or this mishgab, mishgab, is the strong place or the high place that is difficult for the enemy to attack. They have the higher ground. It's this high tower, this place of defense is the place that they have in order to protect them. And so David is saying that, Lord, you are my stronghold. You are my misgob. You're that high place, that, that place of protection that the enemy can't get to easily. It's difficult for him to attack because, God, you always have the higher ground. You always have the higher ground. Sometimes people think that money is going to be their misgob. They're trusting in that. Their security is in that. That's where they think the height of their protection is, is in their money. Some people look at their relationships thinking that their relationships is, oh, I'm going to trust in this because this is my misgob. This is what will protect me from the enemy. This will what will, will keep me safe and secure. Or maybe it's their job. And even look where we are right now. So many people are losing their job. So if they thought that their misgob was in their job, their stronghold, they found out that it, it wasn't. And everything in our lives, I can keep going down the line. And our, our looks, our, our, uh, whether we're attractive, we think we're attractive, and that's our misguided. Whether it's our kids or it's the gifts that God has given us, the talents, the things that I'm able to do, all of those things can be taken away. And so we have to recognize that it's not in the external things. It is in God. He is our misguided. He is our stronghold. He is our advantage in the battle. He is the one whom we can turn to, whom we can call on, and he will be our strong uh, defense. That is in God always. Let's look at Jeremiah 48 and 1. Jeremiah 48 and 1. God is our Miss God. He is our stronghold. That's who he is for us. And he continues to, to be that for us. Jeremiah 48 and verse number one. This is where uh, he's talking about uh, Moab and how they have this Mishgab there in Moab. Uh, says concerning Moab, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, woe to Nebo, for it has been destroyed. Kiriath, Kiriathame has been put to shame. It has been captured. The lofty stronghold has been put to shame and shattered. So what is he saying? This stronghold, this mishgab of Moab, it's been shattered. It's been destroyed. Just like every stronghold that we have that is not the Lord. It can be torn down. It can be shattered. It can be taken away. So our stronghold needs to be in the Lord and in the Lord 
all ways. All right, finally, let's look at verse number three. It says, I call upon the Lord, Yahweh, who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. When I, when I read this verse, the first thing that I see is, I call, I am saved. I call, and I am saved. All I have to do is call, and then the result of that call will be my salvation. Think about that. All we have to do is call, and we are saved. In the world, that's not how it works. We can call and call and call and call and still not have our needs met. Call and get redirected here. Call and get redirected there. Call and get this answer. Call again and get a different answer because you're talking to a different person. But the scripture says, if we call upon the Lord, we will be saved. That is a, a, a promise that God has for his people. All you got to do is call. That's why in the New Testament, what does Jesus say to his disciples? Ask anything in my name, the name of Jesus, and I will do it. That your, your, your request will be answered. Your petition will be answered. We just have to call. That's a promise that, that God gives to his people. Just call on the Lord. Call on the Lord and you will be saved. Will you be saved exactly the way you think you should be saved? Of course not, because you don't know all things. God knows all things. He's looking at every single angle, things you can't see, and he's protecting you even in that. But the promise is that you will be saved. You'll be saved from your enemies. And then I love how it says he is worthy to be praised. God is worthy to be praised. That word there is halal. He is worthy to be praised. What does that mean? He's worthy to shine. He's worthy that everyone should be able to see his goodness and his greatness. He's able to shine. He's worthy to put a flashlight on, to put a light on him, to see every aspect of him, to shine the light. Think about this. Sometimes we look better in the dark, don't we? <laughs> when you can't see all of our wrinkles, you can't see all of our imperfections, all of our acne, all of our crow's feet. So, so certain lights don't do us that well. We like a little shadow in certain places. That's why women put on eye shadow, because they like a little bit of shadow. The same thing with men. We, we, we like, this is my good side, take my good side. You only shine the light here, don't shine the light over here. Oh, and definitely don't shine the light here <laughs> for those of us who've lost some hair. But the scripture is saying that he's worthy to be praised. Halal, you can shine the light on every aspect of God and it's going to be a beautiful image. It's going to be a perfect image. It's going to be a perfect representation of him when he has the light shined on him because he is worthy to be praised. He's worthy to boast about him. It's okay to boast about God. It's not okay for us to boast about ourselves, the things that we like about ourselves, but it's okay to boast about God, to boast all about his goodness, every aspect of him, of his character. It's okay to tell everybody he is worthy to be praised. It's okay to do it because it's true and it's good for us. It's, it's even better for us when we praise him. He's worthy to celebrate. He's worthy to rave about. <laughs> Raving about God going on and on and on and on and on about him. Think about our conversations that we have. How often are we raving about God? Usually we're raving about the things we don't like in the world, the things that didn't go our way. But why, why aren't we raving about God? It also means to, to be foolish about. You know, the, 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 the scriptures say that um, our hope and our trust in the Lord, it seems foolish to the world. It's okay to be a little foolish for God because he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. We need to 
be mad about God. If the world thinks we, we're crazy, so what? It doesn't matter. Are we trying to impress the world? No, we're not. We're trying to win them to the Lord. And if we can rave about him, we can be foolish about him, we can celebrate him, we can boast about him, if we can shine the light upon the Lord, just maybe the world will take notice. At least those who are in the world right now, but they are not of the world because they've been called by God. That's what we need to do as God's people. And then I'll end with the Psalm 44. Psalm 44 and 8. Psalm 44 and 8 says, In God we have boasted all day long, and we give thanks to your name forever. Selah. Let's boast in the Lord all day long because he has delivered us from all of our enemies, even the invisible ones, all of our enemies. Thank you guys for having Bible study connections with me this, this day. I'm so glad that you guys tuned in. I will see you next time. God bless you.